The great thing about being a scientist is, well, you get to be a scientist and it can be fun and rewarding. But being a scientist can be a stressful business too, especially when they come across results like the ones in these videos. Even the experts end up completely stumped sometimes. 20 mysterious discoveries science still can't explain. The Gate to the Past Do you ever get the urge to bring back classics into the new age? Like when an old show gets added to a streaming site, or when an ancient gate gets torn down and then rebuilt. Well, an excavation team made of the combined forces of American and Iraqi members were set on that gate, the Mashki Gate to be specific, and they found some neat ancient carvings in the process. Unfortunately, the gate had been destroyed by some not-so-nice people in 2016, but the team was determined to bring it back to its former glory. As they were digging around in Mosul, they stumbled upon some stunning marble reliefs that depicted war scenes, palm trees, and grapevines. It was basically finding buried treasure, but almost completely by accident. It turns out that the reliefs were created during the reign of the Assyrian king Sennacherib in Nineveh from 705 to 681 BC. He must have really liked them because they were likely moved from his palace to the Mashki Gate where they were never seen again until this event. The excavation team was so excited that they immediately started working to restore the Mashki Gate site to its former glory. And with more than 10,000 archaeological sites found in Iraq, who knows what other treasures they might uncover. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What they captured in the forest has left scientists speechless. Some sort of glowing-eyed humanoid. A humanoid is a non-human entity with human forms or characteristics. And we can safely say that if we're walking in the forest at night and this creature crossed our path, our first thought would be this is not entirely human. Then we'd probably run. Although there are no known humanoid species outside the genus Homo, aka regular humans, the theory of convergent evolution speculates that different species may evolve similar traits. And in the case of a humanoid, these traits may include intelligence and bipedalism and other humanoid qualities. However, whatever this creature is, it's a nope from us. Consider this late night stroll completely over. How about you? Comment below. Hashtag sweet topic. Timeless fashion. Hopefully we have some active conspiracy theorists out there because this next topic is in some strange territory. For those of you who subscribe to the otherworldly ideas, you've probably heard of the ancient astronaut theory, which hints at the idea that ancient civilizations were actually visited by aliens with advanced technology. While some people take this theory seriously, others find it to be strictly science fiction. But one example of an alleged alien artifact are these handbags, which can be seen in stone carvings from various ancient cultures. Yeah, handbags. These carvings show humanoid-type creatures carrying what looks like a rectangular base with a semicircle handle on top. And it really does resemble a modern-day handbag. People in favor of the ancient astronaut theory argue that the carvings depict aliens carrying high-tech devices while skeptics say they're simply bags or baskets that have been used by humans for thousands of years. But maybe these handbag carvings were just ancient fashion accessories. Perhaps the gods and rulers of these cultures just wanted to look stylish while carrying around their food, drink, and wealth. And let's not forget the power of individual style. Maybe these carvings were just an ancient form of self-expression, with artists adding their own unique touch to these everyday objects. It could be that the handbag was a trend that swept the ancient world, like skinny jeans or fanny packs. So the next time you see a handbag carving in an ancient ruin, don't immediately jump to conclusions about alien tech or mystical powers. Instead, appreciate the possibility that ancient humans had just as much style and creativity as we do today. And who knows, maybe someday our own fashion trends will be immortalized in stone carvings for future generations to ponder. The Strange Circle Picture this, a bunch of huge stones arranged in a circle in the middle of the countryside. It's like Stonehenge, but with a bit of a North African flair. It's called the Mazura Stone Circle, and it's an ancient site in Morocco that's been around for thousands of years. And get this, some of these stones weigh up to five tons. That's basically the weight of a small elephant, 
which meant it must have been a real struggle to move these things. Can you imagine trying to push, pull, or carry a small elephant? But here's the kicker. No one really knows why the Mazora Stone Circle was built. Some people think it was used for religious or ceremonial purposes, while others believe it was just a giant calendar, helping people keep track of the seasons. You ask us, it looks more like a giant game of Jenga gone wrong. Then again, maybe the real answer is even more mysterious than that. So, if you're in Morocco and feel like checking out some ancient ruins, be sure to swing by the Mazora Stone Circle. And if you happen to figure out what it was actually used for, be sure to let us know. Then we can finally explain the mystery. Prehistoric Omelet In some exciting news, there was a new discovery of some ancient ostrich eggs in Israel. The eggs are over 4,000 years old, which means they might have lost a bit of flavor. They were discovered near an old fire pit in an excavation by the Israel Antiquities Authority. The team, which was led by Lauren Davis, thinks the eggs could teach us about the nomadic people who lived in the desert way back then. Apparently, ostriches used to roam the area, but the wild ones went extinct sometime around the 19th century. Which is a real shame, because ostrich eggs are pretty amazing. One egg has the nutritional value of 25 chicken eggs, which is stellar. They were used for all sorts of things, like funerary objects, luxury items, and even as water canteens. Talk about practicality, the group of eggs found near the fire pit seemed to indicate that these were collected intentionally for food. One egg was even found directly in the fire pit, which means they were probably cooked and eaten right there. Despite being more than 4,000 years old, the eggs were well preserved because they were buried under the sand for so long. The site where the eggs was found used to be a campsite for desert nomads. The team found burnt stones, flint, and some tools, as well as some pieces of pottery. But the eggs are the most exciting find because they give us a glimpse into the lives of these ancient people. After the excavation, the team will reconstruct the eggs like a puzzle to learn more about the species and how they were used. Sounds like an excellent discovery. Moving beyond the grave. The Knight's Tombstone is a broken Belgian black limestone that was originally set in the floor of the 1617 church to mark the grave of one of Jamestown's elites. The stone measured an impressive 32 inches by 68 inches and is believed to have belonged to Governor Sir George Yeardley, who died in 1627. But as fate would have it, Sir George's tombstone suffered a tragic fate. It was broken into pieces and its original location was lost during reconstruction on the church. Luckily, the tombstone was rediscovered by a group of brave preservationists led by Mary Jeffrey Galt. They found the broken pieces and put them back together using a magical substance called Portland cement. Unfortunately, this magic wasn't as kind to the tombstone as they'd hoped and it ended up causing some damage. Thankfully, a new team of conservationists came to the rescue. They called upon their trusty stone expert, Jonathan Appel, to help them restore the tombstone to its former glory. After carefully cleaning the broken edges and rejoining the pieces with a special stone epoxy, the team managed to put the tombstone back together again. Now, Sir George's tombstone rests in its rightful place once again, marking the grave of one of Jamestown's most esteemed residents. And who knows? Maybe one day, a knight in shining armor will come to pay his respects and the tombstone will light up like magic. Revisiting Anemones Get ready to step back in time and be amazed by this next discovery. An incredible 1,400-year-old anemone mosaic has been uncovered once again using the Israel Trail. This mosaic, which was once a part of an ancient church, was first discovered back in the 80s, but it disappeared from sight over the years. Now, thanks to the hard work of some seriously dedicated archaeologists, this colorful masterpiece has been revealed once more. But that's not all. This mosaic is located near a Roman period villa that still has agricultural processing installations and buildings that the ancient residents used. The church was built during the Byzantine period and set alongside an ancient road that connected the coastal area with the Judean Shapila lowlands. And if you were traveling along that road back in the day, you were in luck because there were refreshing stations every few kilometers where you could rest, recover, and even pray. Maybe that's where our modern rest stops come from. 
The Israel Antiquities Authority, together with the Shoham Local Council and some helpful volunteers, have worked tirelessly to make this site accessible for visitors. IAA archaeologist Yair Amitzer even speculated that the mosaic artist might have been inspired by the anemones that were blooming all around them. Maybe if you go out and see them, you'll be inspired too. Doesn't hurt to give it a try, hands off. Most of us leave handprints all over the place, whether we want to or not. But if you happen to place one at the right place at the right time, maybe one day yours will be as big of a discovery as this one. Archaeologists have uncovered a mysterious handprint and a dry moat that encircled Jerusalem's old city for at least a thousand years. But what they can agree on is what its purpose served so long ago. The moat was discovered during excavations of defensive fortifications and was likely created in the 10th century or even earlier. To prevent enemies from breaching the city walls, the moat, which is at least 33 feet wide and up to 23 feet deep, surrounded the entire city, making it a formidable obstacle for attackers. During the Crusades, it took five weeks for the invading army to cross the man-made water source, while defenders rained down burning sulfur to deter them. They probably did a good job, too. The handprint on the moat's wall has left archaeologists baffled, with many questions as to its significance. Like, is it a symbol? Does it point to something nearby? Or is it just a local prank? Only time will tell. Or maybe they'll keep it a secret forever. The excavations provide a glimpse into the dramatic events that Jerusalem underwent in ancient times, with the fortification serving as a silent testimony to the people who dreamed about and fought for the city. The Israel Antiquities Authority is hoping to make the discoveries available for public viewing, so stay tuned for the chance to see this incredible piece of history for yourself. Ancient Mosques The standard for most mosques is that they're generally pretty old. But archaeologists in Israel have uncovered a rare and ancient mosque believed to be more than 1,200 years old, and that's impressive even for that standard. The mosque happens to be located in the Bedouin city of Rahat, and it contains unique architectural features. Some of these details include a square room and a wall facing the direction of Mecca with a half-circle niche pointing south. According to the specialists, this indicates that it was used as a place of worship for at least a few dozen worshipers at a time. And not too far from this scene is a luxurious estate building that was also discovered, suggesting the wealth of the residents could have been substantial. The Israel Antiquities Authority said that the discovery of the mosque and other homes illuminate the historical process that took place in the northern Negev with the introduction of a new religion, the religion of Islam, and a new rulership and culture in the region. The two mosques found in Rahat from the same era, along with other homes and estates, provide insight into the historical process that occurred in the northern Negev with the introduction of a new religion and culture. These buildings will be preserved whether as historic monuments or as active places of prayer, so we can all appreciate this exciting find for years to come. Maybe we'll even spot a third mosque too one day, the Endless Cave. If you're interested in spelunking, maybe you'd like to try this place out. Krubera Cave, also known as Voronya Cave, is the deepest known cave on Earth, located in Abkhazia, a disputed region in the Caucasus. The cave was named after Russian geographer Alexander Kruber, who discovered it in 1960. The cave measures a whopping 2,197 meters, or 7,208 feet deep, and spelunkers have only been able to explore about two-thirds of it due to the difficult terrain and extreme conditions. The cave has multiple entrances and is over 13 and a half kilometers long, making it the second longest cave in Eurasia. Its deepest point is known as Kruber's Bottom, and it's named after the Ukrainian explorer Alexander Kruber, who led the team that first reached the cave's deepest point in 2001. Exploring Krubera Cave is a dangerous and challenging task requiring specialized skills and equipment. It's considered one of the most extreme environments on Earth due to its remote location, extreme depths, and unpredictable underground rivers and streams. Only highly experienced and well-trained cavers are permitted to explore the cave, and even then, they must take extensive safety precautions. But despite the challenges, the cave is a popular destination for cavers and scientists. It acts as a home to a variety of exotic creatures, such as spiders, beetles, and fish, 
that have adapted to the cave's extreme conditions. One of the most fascinating aspects is the opportunity it provides for scientific research. Its geology and unique ecosystem provide valuable insights into the Earth's history and the evolution of life in extreme environments. So, if you're ever in the mood for an extreme adventure and you happen to be an experienced caver, this cave might be the one for you. Art of the Ancients A lot of art has been lost to time, but then again, time has also brought us a lot of lost art. The Kilisic Sculpture is a stunning piece of ancient art that was rediscovered in Turkey in 1995. It dates back to the Hellenistic period, around the 2nd or 3rd century BC, and it's thought to be the work of an unknown artist from the ancient city of Aphrodisias. To be fair, most artists from that time were unknown since watermarks weren't really a thing yet. The sculpture depicts a veiled woman with her arms crossed over her chest. She's seen wearing a long, flowing robe that covers her entire body, or at least most of her. Her feet are left exposed and visible at the bottom of the sculpture. Her face is obscured by the veil, which is carved with intricate details that suggest the folds of fabric. The sculpture is made of marble and stands at about 80 centimeters or 31 inches tall. It's currently on display at the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Despite its beauty and historical significance, it's still shrouded in mystery. No one knows for sure who the woman is or what she represents. Some have speculated that she could be a goddess or a representation of the Greek concept of kalos, or beauty. Others have suggested that she could be a representation of a deceased person or a memory of their aristocracy. Or maybe it was just an artist pushing their creative limits. Whatever its true meaning is, it remains a captivating example of the art and culture of the Hellenistic period. Its delicate details and serene expression continue to inspire awe and wonder in all who see it. The Forgotten Fortress Have you ever dreamed about finding an ancient fortress hidden from a long time ago? Well, unfortunately, that dream has already been realized by some archaeologists in Israel. The group managed to unearth this hidden fortress that once belonged to one of King David's closest accomplices. It was discovered during construction for a new neighborhood in the Golan where it had apparently been sitting untouched for a truly long time. After some historical digging, as opposed to the literal kind, the fortress belonged to the ancient kingdom of Geshur, which ruled the southern and central Golan during the 11th and 10th centuries BC. According to passages from the Bible, King David married the daughter of the king of Geshur and their son, Absalom, fled to his mother's native land after he took out his half-brother. No one ever said these stories were peaceful, the fortress was located on a small hilltop and had wide walls made of large basalt boulders that encompassed the hill. The excavation team also found ancient figurines and jewelry in the fortress, along with a rare stone carving of a schematic engraving of two horned figures with outspread arms. Some of the researchers of the site believe that Gesher worshipped a moon god, often depicted in the form of a bull, and the stone carvings discovered are likely evidence of their religious practices. The Israeli archaeologists are now working to protect and preserve the fortress for further research and excavations. Maybe when they're done, it'll be a hot new tourist spot to check out. Their coins and heritage Archaeologists have made a fascinating discovery in the Judean desert, a rare wooden box containing 15 silver coins that are dated back to the days of the Maccabean Revolt. The box was found hidden in a cave in the Dara Stream Nature Reserve from about 2200 years ago and it was discovered during excavations carried out there in May of 2022. Among the many finds, the unique lath-turned wooden box was discovered in a crack in the cave. When the lid was removed, the upper part of the box was found to be full of packed earth and small stones. Below this earth layer, a large piece of purple woolen cloth was discovered, covering the 15 silver coins that were arranged with pieces of sheep's wool in the lower part of the box. The coin hoard has since been researched and found to comprise a homogeneous group of silver tetradrachma coins minted by Ptolemy VI. The name Shaomai was found inscribed on one of the coins. Based on the date of the latest coin in the hoard in 170 BCE, the year when the hoard was hidden can be fixed to the beginning of the Maccabean Revolt. This discovery is a significant landmark in Jewish history as it provides insight into the period leading up to the events that took place during that time. Subterranean City 
While it makes sense to have a city above ground where you can get sunlight and plenty of fresh air, it seems like there are a few cases where people thrived underground too. This underground city in Turkey, for example, has been buried beneath the surface for thousands of years. Deep beneath the stunning pink and yellow-hued hillsides of Turkey's Cappadocia region lies the ancient city of Alingubu, now known as Derinkuyu. This underground city, the largest excavated in the world, is a marvel of ancient engineering, capable of housing up to 20,000 people for months on end. Derinkuyu was rediscovered in 1963 by a man who kept losing his chickens, and the subterranean network soon became a popular tourist destination. It's thought that the city was built primarily by the Phrygians, an Iron Age empire known for their elaborate rock-cut facades. While the city's exact date of construction remains contested, it's believed to have been used primarily as a temporary shelter from foreign invaders. The city is massive, with 18 levels of tunnels that stretch on for miles. It's like a massive subterranean spider web, minus the spiders, at least as far as we know. Historians believe that the city was used for storage, but also as a hideout from foreign invaders, which makes sense because when you're 85 meters below the surface, nobody can find you. So if you're ever in Turkey and you're feeling adventurous, why not check out Durinkuyu? Just don't get lost in the tunnels. We hear it's a bit of a maze down there, Nalanda University. The Nalanda University ruins are the remains of one of the oldest and most prestigious centers of learning in ancient India. The site is located in the eastern Indian state of Bihar, and it was once a thriving center of education and scholarship from the 5th to 12th century CE. The university was founded in the 5th century and was considered a world-class institution of higher learning. It attracted scholars and students from all over India, as well as from other parts of Asia, including China, Tibet, and Korea. The university's curriculum was vast, and it covered a wide range of subjects, including theology, astronomy, mathematics, medicine, and philosophy. The site of the university is now in ruins, but visitors can still see the remains of several impressive structures, including temples, libraries, and lecture halls. The ruins also include the remains of several monasteries and stupas that were built in the vicinity of the university. One of the most striking features of the Nalanda University ruins is the massive library complex that was once housed there. The library was said to contain hundreds of thousands of manuscripts, including some of the most important Buddhist texts ever written. Unfortunately, the library was destroyed during the 12th century Muslim invasion of India, and many of its priceless manuscripts were lost forever. Despite its reputation as a world-class center of learning, the university was eventually abandoned in the 12th century for reasons that are still unclear today. Today, the Nalanda University ruins are a popular tourist destination, and they're also recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so you know it's legit. Visitors can explore the impressive ruins, which offer a glimpse into the rich intellectual and cultural history of ancient India. Grave Creek Mound the Grave Creek Stone is another mysterious artifact that was discovered in the late 1700s near the town of Moundsville, West Virginia. The stone is a large sandstone slab that's inscribed with strange markings and symbols that have never been fully deciphered, hence the mystery. The stone was discovered by a group of men who were digging a grave in a burial mound near the Ohio River. They found the slab of sandstone at the bottom of the mound and it quickly gained attention for the unusual symbols etched onto its surface. Some believed that the symbols were an ancient form of writing, while others thought that they might be some kind of map or code. Over the years, many scholars and experts have attempted to figure out what the markings on the Grave Creek Stone really mean, but none have been able to come up with a definitive translation. Some of the symbols are similar to those found in Native American petroglyphs, while others are closer to Old World alphabets like Phoenician or Celtic. There are a number of theories about the origins and purposes of the Grave Creek Stone, and each one seems to hold up just as well as the next. Some believe that it was created by an ancient civilization that has since been lost to history, while others think that it was made by Native Americans or early European settlers. Despite numerous attempts to decode the message on the Grave Creek Stone, it remains one of the great unsolved mysteries of American history. The stone is now on display at the Delft Nerona Museum in Moundsville, where visitors can see the strange symbols and ponder the mystery for themselves. Gold to Spare If you've ever happened to stumble upon a dollar, you probably felt pretty lucky. 
so you could imagine just how lucky the archaeologists in Israel felt after they found a hidden treasure trove of 44 pure gold coins from the Byzantine era. The coins are decorated with images of old emperors. Experts believe that the treasure was hidden during the Muslim conquest of the area at the end of the Heraclius reign. This exciting discovery not only sheds light on the economy of the city of Banias during the last years of the Byzantine rule, but also reflects a specific moment in time when the owner may have hidden his fortune in the threat of war, hoping to return one day to retrieve it. Unfortunately, the owner was not able to return and retrieve his property, which is where the modern archaeologist stepped in. The researchers noted the differences in the portraits displayed on each coin. In the early years, only his portrait was depicted on the coin, but after a short time, the images of his sons also appeared. One can actually follow his sons growing up from childhood until their image appears the same size as their father, who is depicted with a long beard. Apparently, currency is a good way to keep track of time. The coins were in excellent condition, almost as if they had just come out of the mint. The gold wasn't damaged by the soil chemical processes. Finding gold in such pristine condition is always exciting for archaeologists. The discovery is a remarkable glimpse into the past, reminding us of the events that took place during that time and the people who lived during the Byzantine era. Brimham Rocks Hold on to your hats, folks, because we've got a real rock star on our hands. The Brimham Rocks are a bunch of boulders in England that look like they're ready to party. These rocks have been jamming together for millions of years, and they're still going strong. Now you might be thinking, what's so special about a bunch of rocks? Well, these aren't your average pebbles. They come in all shapes and sizes, and some of them are even taller than your Aunt Bertha. But what makes the Brimham Rocks really stand out is their unique formations. There's one that looks like a giant mushroom, another that looks like a leaning tower of Pisa, and even one that looks like a hippopotamus taking a bath. You won't find rock formations like these anywhere else in the world, and if that's not enough to get you excited, how about this? Legend has it that the Brimham Rocks were created by a giant who was feeling a bit bored. He decided to toss a few boulders around and see what would happen. Well, as it turns out, he was quite the artist, because the rocks he created are a masterpiece. So next time you're in England, be sure to stop by the Brimham Rocks and rock out with these legendary stones. And who knows? Maybe you'll even spot that giant still hanging around and getting ready for its next master creation. Archiving for the Aztecs The first tomb of an Aztec ruler has been found by some up-and-coming Mexican archaeologists with something to prove. They've detected underground chambers that may contain the remains of the Aztec ruler, Emperor Awazaru, providing a unique window into Aztec civilization at its height. The search for the tomb has been difficult, to say the least. Spanish conquerors built their own city on top of the Aztec ceremonial center, which has made excavations challenging. However, a damaged colonial building after a 1985 earthquake eventually gave experts their first chance to examine the site. Using ground-penetrating radar, archaeologists have located what they believe is an entryway into the tomb about 15 feet below ground. The passage is filled with water, rocks, and mud, which has made excavation delicate work. The constant water level may actually help preserve the materials inside the tomb, such as wood and bone, which would otherwise decompose in the open air. Mexico has sought unsuccessfully to recover Aztec artifacts from various museums around the world, meaning this could be a highlight for their history. If it does belong to them, it will be a tremendous discovery for Aztec archaeology and for Mexico's rich cultural past. In the meantime, Workers continue to delicately dig while suspended from slings, avoiding the water and mud as best they can. It's a slow and painstaking process, but the possibility of finding something truly remarkable makes it all worthwhile. The Dream Tablet In a moment that feels straight out of an Indiana Jones movie, an ancient clay tablet featuring the story of a superhuman king has been returned to Iraq after being smuggled through multiple countries for over 30 years. Dubbed the Gilgamesh Dream Tablet, this religious text is part of the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest recognized poems in the world. The tablet dates back 3,600 years and was looted from an Iraqi museum during the Gulf War in 1991. After being smuggled into the United States, the tablet was eventually purchased by arts and crafts firm Hobby Lobby for over $1.67 million and displayed in its museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. However, in 2017, 
doubts emerged over the tablet's origin, and the museum started researching its provenance. When the item was confirmed to have been looted from an Iraqi museum, the museum informed the Iraqi government and legal proceedings were launched against Christie's Auction House, which had arranged the sale. In 2019, the tablet was seized from the museum by U.S. agents, and in July, a U.S. federal judge ordered its return to Iraq. Once back in its homeland, the tablet will be sent to the National Museum in Baghdad, where the dreams of the mythical King Gilgamesh will be preserved once again in their rightful home. Tiny Coffins Nearly two centuries ago, in June 1836, five young boys discovered a mysterious collection of 17 tiny coffins, each containing a wooden figure, hidden in a small opening on the rock of the north side of Arthur's Seat in Edinburgh. The coffins were arranged in three rows, with eight in the first and second rows and one on its own placed on top. The figures in the coffins were custom-made and dressed in clothes that were stitched and glued around them to make them look like little people. Despite the popularity of the exhibit at the National Museum of Scotland, the origins of the coffins remained a mystery. Various theories have been proposed over the years, including that they were used in witchcraft rituals or created to represent sailors lost at sea. However, the truth behind the mystery remains unknown. Only eight of the coffins survive today, and they're on display at the National Museum of Scotland. While there may be an explanation out there for pretty much everything, sometimes it just escapes us. Just when we think we have the answer figured out, something new comes along to prove us wrong, or makes us realize we were barking down the wrong rabbit hole. But despite the lack of proof, we'll continue to investigate each and every mystery that comes our way.